So did you bring those in from outside, from your garden? I did. I love I love gardening and I love having flowers to cut in the summer. So all of that was is from the garden. Shelby Michelle with Farmhouse Living and welcome back to our channel. We are doing a patio slash outdoor space tour with Michelle Howell of Vintage Home Designs. We've toured her home many times and we are going to take you inside to show some updates as well because we can never come without showing everything. There's always something new, there's always something interesting and you are like styling queens. Well and truly you're bringing the outdoors in at the season right now yes. so really it's outdoors inside. Yeah it's mm -hmm. summer home inspiration really but you could this could be applied to fall and spring and really just how creatively you bring the elements outside without I mean it's free. It's you know? free. Yeah that's, that's the best part. Wonderful. So we have briefly shared your patio before but I've never gotten it in its full glory you know like it's always when we come there's like lights blasting in so it's hard to get it but today is the day to get it in all of its glory and I know you had a table you're working on I did I really wanted it to be finished because it's gonna be so awesome but that didn't happen yet so and I know like when you're doing it you think oh, like darn it's not amazing but this to me when we walked in i was like this is so cute so well done and i love that you added the flags for really all of summer all right. the um, patriotic holidays yeah. and you said you do that a lot in the summer i do i usually put things out with a little bit that i do uh, memorial day and i leave it until labor day because then you have fourth of july and flag day and just so many patriotic holidays fall during those three months it's the perfect time to pull out what you have and leave the flags out yes and so this is always kind of where your table is, or a table is, a table. and you do a lot of tablescapes in here. I do, and we love to be out here when we can. And of course, this time of year, this is the west sun, so we don't get to enjoy it as much from now until about until October. But the rest of the year, we eat out here a lot. We, I love to entertain out here, and I do a lot of my tablescapes out here. What's nice about it is you have these amazing garage doors, and so you can close it for mosquitoes or things like that and just enjoy the patio. So I love that. You have a sink here, which does that get used very much? Not a lot, but some, because if we grill out here or if I'm doing projects with repotting things, it's great to have it outside and not mm -hmm. carry the mess inside. So mm -hmm. I, I use it a fair amount. And the garage doors are great because in the winter time when it's cold back here, we can close those and light the fire in the fireplace and open all of these French doors. And within about 30 minutes, it's about the temperature of the house. And so we have an extended Lit area to, to entertain if we're having a lot of people and we want to open this up. So they were really a great addition. Well, so if you do that in the summer, that doesn't really apply. No, because it just kind of makes it like an oven out here. <laughs> well, it's 100 <laughs> degrees in Texas right now. We right. are in June and it is now 100 degrees officially. Cool. So that's part of our issue here. But if you were in another part of the country, that might work for you. Oh, it would be great. And we also, originally the idea was to put the ghost screens up there that kind of disappear and we just haven't done that yet, but we would like to do that. So that would help with the bugs and the mosquitoes and would keep the airflow in here. It yeah. just, because this space is west, it gets so hot in here. It's just unbearable with them opened or closed. You just kind of yeah. almost can't be out here during you the summer. You need like one of those Mr. Cool units. Yes. That people are. Yes. So someone sponsor Miss Michelle. <laughs> Miss Michelle. <laughs> some misters yeah. and some screens. <laughs> Yeah, so send some sponsorships our way for that because that would be wonderful. Yeah, I would right, think yeah that great. would help a lot. Hang out. Would yeah. you, if I, if we hooked you up, would we be able to just come and hang, hang out whenever? Out. Absolutely. Free rain. Okay. So, what I was going to say was over here, and as it is with the dining, you always have the most coziest sitting places, nooks. So, this side is for dining, this side is for just cuddling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we so watch TV thing. out here when we watch TV. We don't watch TV a lot, but when we do and the, and the weather cooperates, we like to sit out here and 
as long as we can have a fire in here, we do that. And I don't like looking at that empty box, so I tried to get creative this yeah. year and fill it with extra flower pots that were all over my garage. I um, thought that was so cute. Yeah, we love we love this space. Are those new flower pots? No. They're old? They're old. Yeah. They're used. And most of them I had in the garage and some that I've picked up. Um, when I had that idea, I started really keeping an eye out for them at an estate sale or thrift yeah. stores. And I was surprised how many I found. Yeah. And so they were, so what I did buy was a dollar or two a piece. I did not spend much money on that at all. Well, so. I wanted to do that as well in mine, but I can just imagine my one-year-old just tossing flower pots oh. around <laughs> across the room. <laughs> but it's a great idea, even for an indoor. I think in the spring and the summer, it would be really cute. It would be fun. That was I was going to do it indoors, and then I remembered that we have like gas logs, and that would have been a big ordeal to yeah. move that. This is a wood burning, and I didn't have to remove logs, so it, it just yeah. worked easier out here. So one time you told me about the mantle on the fireplace. Tell us that yes. story. So when we were building the house and I was kind of on the hunt for some vintage and architectural pieces to really bring some uniqueness and character to the house, I saw that posted on one of the online sales, Facebook Marketplace or one of the local you know, online garage sales. And it was in um, the Highland Park area of Dallas and a lady um, had salvaged it from a tear down of a home that was over a hundred years old yeah. and I was lucky enough to to grab it on that sale so I drove into Dallas one day and got it and I think it was a hundred dollars and so that was a that was a treasure and it just made a um, made more of a statement of that wall and that fireplace yeah. well I every time I come here I want to go thrifting and estate selling <laughs> and you always have some story or something new that's really fun and you're like it's a dollar I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay well let me go try to work that out so it's amazing see so and you have um, boxwoods and a cutting garden mm -hmm. so all the things that you use to decorate the mantle and the tables are just from your backyard yeah for the most part and in, in the winter um, we have some um, cedar or blue spruce trees around the neighborhood and some are in my friend's backyard so I'll, I'll ask friends or neighbors or something that I know has something maybe that I don't have so most of the time when I do clippings or things it's either from mine or, or from a friend's yard it's wild well one thing you always have warm neutrals everywhere like that's your signature but i came in today and not only on the patio but inside you've introduced some blues i have um a couple of years ago i realized that i had my great grandmother's blue and white transfer wear set in a ca cabinet and i thought you know the blue and white i'm drawn to it and i appreciate it even though i don't typically use it because i just don't typically gravitate to color and I thought, you know, the blue and white is so classic and kind of screams summer to me. So mm -hmm. I decided to start pulling out just little bits of it um, just for some hints of, of summer decor in the house. I already had it and I've collected a few more pieces to go with it since I kind of found that I enjoy doing that in the yeah. summer. Um, so yeah, I've, I've kind of added, started adding that I in the summertime. It. Yeah, you never see the same house twice because every time we come in, she's refreshed for season. And also one of the neat things about Michelle is that you see things at a different vantage point. Like you'll do quirky things, like your rugs are never straight on, or not, some of them are not straight on or they're layered. and. So there's just always something of interest everywhere you look. And, but what I love about this patio especially is that it truly is like you're inside, but you're outside. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, it's actual furniture and dining and living room. And it's slipcover and it's cozy. And so I love that. And I think the slip covered furniture, because most of it, um, except the chairs, is slip covered, which is great for out here because I can pull it off because obviously it gets dusty out here. It doesn't yeah. matter how much we clean it, it's going to get dusty. So I can pull that off and wash it and throw it back on and it works great. great. And then chair cushions are the same thing. So it's a great, um, it's a great thing to have for outdoor furniture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And these are Ikea, were they? This one is not. The chair is Ikea. And that's one that I found on the Facebook Marketplace that somebody wanted, like, just come pick it up. Um, so that was great. And this sofa I found in South Texas, in Fredericksburg, Texas, years ago. And I went into an a antique mall, and they had this sofa, but it was just the sofa part, not a cover. 
and it was just covered in the like muslin or domestic fabric, but it's down filled, all of it. Mm -hmm. And so I bought it and brought it home and I just bought kind of a loose fitting slip cover to fit the sofa part. And then I took the down cushions to a seamstress and had covers, covers made that are zippered so I can still take them off. So and I did two fabrics. I did a matelasse on one side and a solid, like a cotton twill, and so I can reverse them, the, the backs and the, the seats. Yeah. And I just love it because it is squishy <laughs> and cozy <laughs> because it's all down. Um, so yeah, that's one that's, it's been with me a long time. So the, the slip cover is just like a general, like you just got it online. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. So that's the thing about Michelle is that it's so everything's unexpected and everything is very unique. But you're not going to go to the store and buy something nope. that you see here because it's all in her head. But I hope it inspires yeah. because it's like I feel like, oh my gosh, no matter what my budget, I can do it when I come to your house. And that's yeah. the thing is I try to keep it budget friendly. I don't I don't like to stop at, shop at big box stores typically. I like to find the unique things, but I also want them at a bargain. And part of that is because I like to change it often. And so yeah. I'm not going to make big investments in furniture because then you feel like you can't change it often. Exactly. And since I like to, and I love to find a deal. So I, I hope that things that I'm sharing and, and posting and doing inspires people to find the look alike or to realize you can have beautiful spaces on a budget. Yes. Yeah. Well, Speaking of beautiful spaces, I think we need to go inside and show the changes and then stay tuned because at the end, we're going to show the exterior, the front exterior, which is beautiful as well. And I don't think we've ever shown it. I don't think so. I don't think so. So this is exclusive, y'all. Okay. So like I said, outside the blues, this, it really does feel more summery, but it still feels like your signature. If you were to tell me, Hey, I'm adding blue. I'd be like, no, Michelle, that's not you. Your signature is all neutral. Don't do it. Well, you get upset when you add color at Christmas. The one time you did oh, that, yeah. that was <laughs> like, it, it just, it was but not it was red. <laughs> it was like, but the blue is so sophisticated and subtle. It's, it melds with the neutrals like seamlessly. It's very like Southern living feeling, yeah. like sophisticated. Well, I, I, the blue and white, just, there's just something classic about that blue and white to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is very popular every time we come is your cabinet that you have styled here and you have a lot of collections in here. And every time the top is a little bit different, yeah. you know, on during Christmas, we've got the trees. Last time, I, wasn't there like pictures or something? I do. I have. That's kind of in between. I just do a collection of white pictures, and I've done all gardening theme pots and mm -hmm. old garden utensils. And I don't know. I just try to think of something different once in a while to change yeah. it up for the seasons. I love to do pumpkins up there in the fall. Yeah. So it's been a lot of things. This has got to be my favorite. This is my favorite. I don't this know is. why. It's okay. just the books with those hats. Those. I mean just a collection of do you wear any of these a couple of them are mine and i have decorated a few walls like at our airbnbs with hats mm -hmm. before because i mean it's inexpensive and i needed to keep that on the budget and i keep my hats whatever season it is like my summer ones out on the wall in my bedroom because it's decor and it's easy for me to grab and i started thinking oh that's what i could do up there so i pulled a couple of mine out and then i hit thrift stores i was shocked that in two thrift stores, I found all of those and none of them were more than $4. Wow. So it was a real inexpensive, you know, wall art basically. And then the books, I had them all because I just had this thing about vintage books yeah. and obviously neutral. And I just, I had all of them and yeah. I just decided, okay, I can fill the whole top of the hutch yeah. with that. So yeah, again, just an out of the box, uh, unexpected wow you know it's it's always something different and unique and I just love I when I come in I, that's where my eye goes to like what did she do now yeah well yeah. speaking of when I came in what I was like oh my gosh was your garden tools on the wall and you are the queen of topiaries oh I just love them so much but boy <laughs> I can't keep one alive in the house that's real <laughs> So I have experimented with so many different things. So all of those, except the one on the right that you can see is looking pitiful, he's on his way out, was an olive tree that I made into a topiary and it lasted about three months and, and he's he's about done. Hey, that's good. So three three months. Months. I made it three I, months. I think with the neutral, like your vibe, like you can rock dead plants. Oh, absolutely. Like if I had a dead plant in my house, they'd be like, 
<laughs> but you yeah. got it. Well, I was hoping it wouldn't show too much, but it's it's pretty bad. Well, you gave it away. I would have kept it a secret. Maybe t bumped up the green a little yes. bit on the editing or whatever. <laughs> So you also have a beautiful bowl of moss and you've styled your hutch. This is just like screams summer to me. And I, I just, I want to do something. I want to get more topiaries even if they do die because of how you've styled that so well. <laughs> well, I have all the real ones on the front porch so you can see those later. I'm mean, yeah. those out there so maybe they might, might have a hope. Do those outside they do well? Yeah, they do pretty well okay. outside. Okay, Yeah. because you gave me one. Yeah. last week and I, those, minus, do, those are great outside okay okay, okay. good because i was like I don't, yeah i feel a lot of pressure because right. of the gift <laughs> yeah, they, those do pretty well they need a they they need a lot of water and especially now that it's what is it 114 heat index today so hot. Yeah. Uh, lots of water but yes they will probably do fine do outside. good okay and this home also with all the wicker and your basket chandelier lights over, pendants over the island i mean it really is a garden paradise in yeah. here like you can just see easily how the outdoors work and so everywhere you look there's just again it's from your cutting garden and it's just florals and plants and so did you bring those in from outside, from your garden i did i love um i love gardening and i love um, having flowers to cut in the summer so all of that was is from the garden or the flowering vitex tree in the front and I, you know, there's a small window with some of that. Last uh, two months ago, it was honeysuckle, and all behind the house, it's just wild honeysuckle. And I just cut it every few days to enjoy it as mm, long as I can. Yeah. And then I started adding some of the stuff that's flowering in the garden. So I have that out all the time. I enjoy that. And when it's the seasons that I can't grow much, which is usually you know January, February, I'll buy the five dollar grocery store flowers yeah. and cut greenery on the brand, on the trees outside to bulk it up because mm -hmm. you can get a lot of, yeah. I get a lot of joy out of $5 bundle of Me too. flowers when I can't. So I, yes. I love to, to have those all the time in the house. Yeah. Well, one thing, when you said that I thought about, so I have a dogwood tree outside of my house and every time it blooms, I'm so excited. And I start bringing those clippings in and decorating. It makes me more excited about my house and it was free. So I love that there's seasonal prompts to get yeah. excited about your home even if you're not like buying a new piece of furniture right, yeah. or whatever. We exactly. need cutting gardens. We need cutting gardens. Can you, you advise teach us? us? Oh. <laughs> teach us your ways. I can do that. <laughs> okay. Super easy. Well, right. I don't know. We're <laughs> so lessons coming your way sometime. Not not sure if she can teach us, anyone can learn. But I do. I love every time I come in your house, you have fresh flowers. I'm like these do not look grocery store at all. So they either came from your yard or you did some magic for sure. So you do have also dried flowers though. You have a beautiful, huge basket of hydrangeas and I've seen you use that in every season. You use Which it's another too. thing from my garden. When those bloom in late summer, I cut those and use them fresh and just let them dry. And then I have that because as they lose their color and fade, it makes a great fall decor. It's your color. Yes. It's your color palette. It's color. It fades <laughs> right into my color palette, so yeah. I use those a lot in the fall. So you get a lot of mileage out of those flowers. Yes. yes. You like every time I come here, you have more, but they're in a different spot, and so I love that that you can just like move things around and right. and get some mileage out of it. Okay. So speaking of blue, you've added blue throw pillows to your sofa. I have, I have. I just ordered some new ones and I'm loving them. So I put a few in, inside on the white slip covered sofa and then outside just to carry through the little pops of blue in addition to the dishes that I was using. Yeah, and you have links for those on your blog? I do. Okay, so I will put that in the description because those are really cute. Were they, what's them. price? Um, one set of them is, um, Amazon Creative Co-op and okay. they were like, I don't know, $15 for two. It's just the covers. Okay. And the others were Etsy. They were a little pricier, but they were, they're they so well made and the fabric's beautiful and I'll, I'll use them forever. They're a Waverly fabric. Well, and a lot of times if you mix like the $15 a, a more affordable thing with a higher right. price thing, it elevates all of it. So yeah, we absolutely. like to do that little trick. Yeah. Yeah. I try to, but I'm always attracted to the expensive. So I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but when I come over here, I'm very motivated too, because I would never guess price points on a lot of your stuff. Like your yeah. $4 hats, I would be like, 
Someone yeah. would end up selling that to me at an estate sale for like eighty dollars. <laughs> right, <laughs> it's true. Don't do it. <laughs> so also, your dining table. You have a new tablescape there. Not very many people could just pull off. Like it looks like you just chunked your frame on there. And oh, I kind of did. It, th that one's a little. That one might be pushing it a little bit. It's very out of the box. It's whimsical, and I love it. I, I love it. Show. Yeah, and yeah. Then your flag on the staircase. Another yes. flag. Not too much. You don't have to do. It k feels kitschy when you go like everywhere. Yes. But that is Agreed. perfect. Just little touches is just enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you almost notice it a little bit more, I think. Yeah. If there's just a little hint of it here and there. Yes. I think it almost makes more impact. Oh, I yeah. agree. I agree. Totally agree. So now it's time. We're going to do your front porch. We Guys, we love you so much. We are going outside in the 110 degree weather to show you this most beautiful front porch. And you know what? I don't even know if I care that it's hot because it's beautiful. You know, you I go. can enjoy it. So I'm sure you have to water this a lot when it's, it's brutal. I do. But I love that it's whimsical. Did you like know? Yeah, did you know what you wanted when you... I did. When we were moving in, I met with the guy that is so good at doing it for all perennial because I, I, I wanted that so it would come back. And then, you know, when you do perennial, every year it comes back bigger and better. And um, he's great at the cottage garden layout and perennial. And so I made him a list of what I knew I did not want, things that were more structured and a few plants that I just don't love. And I don't love red flowers. I don't know what it is. I have this adversity to red flowers. I didn't want anything <laughs> red. Okay. And then, um, so he went and bought a lot of things and I had some things I had dug up and brought from my other house and he placed them out there and I kind of okayed it and then he went with it. And you know, of course a few things have been replaced over the years, but this year because we got so much rain, it has absolutely gone crazy and it's getting a little unkept looking and so I keep trying to pull it out and every time I do, it goes crazy again. So this is a little more than it usually is. Okay, but I, I love it. it. It's kind I of love out it. of control. But, but um, the gardens in Texas have all gone a little crazy with all the amount of rain we've gotten. But what I love about this neighborhood is that everyone keeps a beautiful yard. And you're, I would feel shamed if I didn't keep a beautiful <laughs> yard in this neighborhood. These are, um, it's a new neighborhood with homes made to look old, farm, old farmhouses, right? Is that what you... Farmhouse, cottage style, craftsman style, they all have to be that sort of look. And right. can't be all brick unless they're painted brick. Yes. Um, it was it was mimicked after Seaside, Florida. That's okay. where the neighborhood concept came from. Wow. And it's, it's stunning. And when you drive through, because what is really cool is that they kept the original trees. So mm -hmm. the trees that they could save are all mature, yet you have these new homes that have these stunning gardens, but I think one, yours is one of the best. Yeah, thank you. I'm gonna give you an award right here publicly. <laughs> <laughs> so you did, say, you are like topiary queen. Like, I do love them. It's, they look so good. These are very healthy. Are these new or you've had um, them? No, most of the, a couple of them were from last year and a couple of them are new and I've kind of been playing with buying some different um, plants to see if I could make it into a topiary and actually I had a little video I did I still need to post but I found this pitiful little flower the other day at the nursery and all the leaves were bare and I thought oh I might make a topiary out of that so I did and it's not something you typically would and we'll see how it does up here without getting sun yeah but I think in Texas because it gets the sunlight and the heat it will still probably be okay yeah but these are gonna have to be watered really often this year okay you also have decor out here though so you have okay. some botanicals right here you have great seating you even have a lamp on your patio. <laughs> and I took, I, I used one of the vintage lamps and took the fabric off because yeah. it gets so dusty out here. That's so much easier to keep clean than fabric on the lamp. Yeah. Um, and I have my little um, chalkboard and I love to do seasonal messages on that. Um, so that stays there and I just yeah. change what out does it say? quotes. Or, that one says live simply and bloom wildly. Um, but I try yeah. to do different messages on that. Yeah. And I change the artwork out. I have some for fall and some for Christmas, so I changed those too. Oh, so that, oh yeah, the, they're just frames mounted on mm -hmm. the, okay. And then you also have blue out here, so you brought some blue pillows mm -hmm. on the front. So I love that it flows from literally the entrance of your home all the way to the back patio. So that is so cool and makes me want to go like 
I don't know, really go on Etsy and like buy some pillows. <laughs> it's really cute. So mom, anything else that you want to pick Michelle's brain? I feel like this is like a design session right I now. I know. So one of the things that I feel like changes and transforms any patio space is flooring and ceiling. And so you've done the classic beadboard for this farm home and then the floors are the brick veneer. They look like brick laid brick and it's rich the colors are great and so just you have the white house but these really beautiful textures ceiling and floor that elevates it so i think if you're looking for something to transform your patio that's one easy way right. is the ceiling it made a big difference when we did this and these actually are brick they are from oh, a brick okay. company but they are cut the oh, thickness of pavers but I they really you. are okay. brick okay um it made a big difference from this just being concrete to be and obviously that's that's an investment but we love it it added so much to this porch we spend a lot of time out here too because when it gets too hot in the backyard and on that back patio that we talked about we can sit out here in the mornings and have coffee or in the evenings and we get a breeze here and yeah. the wet you know we're not having the west sun so yeah it's wonderful. And did you say you have a source for this? I do. I do have what a source is, for this. Where is this from? This is from Garland, Texas, from a company called Packer Brick. Packer and we actually Brick. have this on this patio, the back patio, and I loved it so much. I put it in a guest bathroom and in my laundry room. And oh. those are the only two places in my home that I don't have the, the hardwood, hardwood everywhere. But I really wanted the brick. And it, even in those spaces, it just really changed the space and because they're a small sma space it's obviously not nearly the investment so you can have a little bit of character in like mm -hmm. a powder bath without it being really costly yeah yeah, okay, yeah. well thank, thank you, you. <laughs> i feel like it's a treat every time so we have many tours of michelle's home so i'm going i made a whole playlist so this will be an addition <laughs> to the playlist and we're not going to stop coming because right okay, well I because viewers it. What? Ask. Yeah. And, and we want to, you know, make them happy, and we are happy when we're here. So thank you yeah. for oh, having yeah. us. I, I love having you. I'm going to have to go back and watch your playlist because yeah. we've done so many. so many. I'll have to go back and watch and them compare. again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So my editing has gotten a little better. We didn't have mics our first tour. Yeah. Now we have mics. Your audio is better. So if you guys do visit back, just know we've improved and just give us a yeah. <laughs> also, I want you to make sure that you go check out Michelle's blog. She has tablescapes, really cool DIY ideas. She's literally like how to make a topiary, little things that you would not think of that are cost effective, really creative and easy for anyone to do. She has all those ideas. So make sure that you head there. You're also on Instagram, Vintage Home Designs, and you post daily, really yeah, often. Much. Yeah. Yeah. And it'll stop your scroll. It will stop your scroll. That's what I love about your Instagram is when I am scrolling on my home feed, I always know it's you. <laughs> it's very distinctively, here's Michelle and her creative off the wall idea, like making dishes into a Christmas tree on your <laughs> wall or cutting a taupe, random plant into a topiary. Not everyone has the skill sets, but everyone can be inspired by yes. Michelle. Yes. I think everyone can do it. No, there's something different about your brain. Yeah, we decide like I want to go in there and just like tinker around, <laughs> see what's going on, because you can. Think but hopefully, it's, it's inspiring, and I think everyone can do it from seeing it. Yes, yes. with lots of instruction and detail. I could never just without get up. that. Yeah. So yeah. that's why your blog and your Instagram are very valuable to me. Yes. So and they will be to my audience as well. So. Make sure you subscribe, close this out, Mom. Yeah, like, subscribe, share with your friends, especially those who are trying to do something outdoors. It is getting into the summer, but you can still transform that space. So like, subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.